I'm going to go ahead and turn mine into a full doll because usually it takes about maybe a day for each segment. Well, even if you gave yourself two days, that's still only about, you know, under a week for the project to do the sculpting with it. And you can do it in a leisurely way. And I just want to finish mine so I get a witch to have on display. <laughs> They're so sweet. All right, so now we start shaping the knuckles a little bit. We're starting to pay attention to how wide this clay is on the fingers. Now that we kind of have it all roughed in a bit. And again, this is where we should kind of check width. And I also want to go ahead and push the thumb down in the front. So that's more the pose I want her to have. And I'm going to close up those hands just a little bit, closing up the fingers rather. There we go. So anyway, um, where was I? I was talking about when I <clears throat> was able to think a lot when I was laid up with my leg that I'm just recovering from now. And I just started thinking about what, you know, you always want to find the perfect job, right? Of what you would do even if you weren't getting paid for it. But besides the money factor with that, is also an energy factor with that. Like, what is it that you want to do anyway? Like, that your energy is saying, hey, this sounds fun. I want to do this thing. What do you want to do anyway? Because I feel like then you're not trying to talk yourself into getting up and going and, you know, being enthusiastic about something that you're not. And, you know, like, it's just, if you can find the thing that you already are excited about, I feel like you're a step ahead of the game. And so I know a lot of the stuff with my work has been that way. There's been aspects that aren't, but there's definitely aspects that are that way. And so I was also noticing that when I focused on those, that's when it works the best. That's when I'm happiest. That's when, when uh, it can still be busy, but it's not so stressful. It's, um, I don't know, it fuels you so much as, as well when you're doing something that makes you happy and feel satisfied that I, for me personally, I'm able to do more that way when I find those things. And as it is now, as I'm trying to recover my energy, I need that. <laughs> I need to find in any little pockets of energy available to me wherever I can. And so as I was thinking and doing some research for the different projects I've been working on, I found so many that I wanted to do. And I was like, hmm, what I really want to do is to be able to sculpt and do a lot of these little cute projects. And so I thought, well, maybe that's what I should do then. <laughs> and so what I am going to do is kind of return my focus a bit into the teaching, especially the online courses too. And these little kits have been so fun to do. I really enjoy doing those. And so I'd like to keep doing those as well and just kind of pare down the supply end of things just a little bit for a while so I can catch my breath and get it back to where I can handle it. Hopefully it won't affect many of you. Um, most of the main supplies, you know, that you're used to finding from us, you, you still will be able to. But I'm just going to, for my end, uh, with all the different things we try to keep in stock, it can be kind of crazy sometimes. And really, it doesn't have to be that, that huge yet. You know, it doesn't have to have that many things. It's better if I just focus on the solid main things that we need in the first place. And then um, spend more time doing these things that I love. And I love giving back to the community this way. Like one of my favorite things to do is what I'm doing right now, just sharing with you how I make a cute little witch hand or, you know, whatever the project happens to be because I'm still amazed at this process, you know? I had such a good opportunity when I was just newly hurt with my ankle. It was hurting so badly too that <laughs> I had scheduled a private um, workshop for our contrast winner, Maria Barletta, and she was just awesome and amazing. We made our ball-jointed dolls together, and it was so fun. And it just reminds me of how amazing it is just to share that process with somebody, you know, that, that creative desire. And, um, I don't know, you go through an experience together, and I really love that, too. And so 
it just helped me see what I want to do is just really focus the business on the parts that I really do love because they happen to be the parts I'm best at too. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so expect to see a lot more from me that way as far as the videos and teaching and stuff is concerned that way because that's really what I love doing and sharing with you. It's a magical, magical process and I love how it brings us together and what we create and share with each other. Alrighty, I think, I think I've said about all I need to say. Now we're just going to keep squeezing. Just like that. Just to narrow it. And if you need to make them a lot thinner, you can by like using your X-Acto knife and trimming it out. Usually I just try to get it to go into the finger because I'm going to use a lot for knuckles and such still, so I'm not convinced we're not going to need this clay yet. Well, up here you can kind of start separating the hand area from the fingers. Now, if you've been watching me sculpt for a while, you'll notice that usually I don't have armatures in my hands. Usually those hands are teeny, teeny, tiny. <laughs> and so if you're going to use bigger hands like this, you definitely want to take advantage of an armature. It can be tricky in some ways because the clay kind of wiggles around on the wire here and there. But it's, it's nice to have that sturdiness. And you can work in stages too and add in later pieces, especially if you're doing witch hands where smoothness isn't much of an issue. It's not a big concern with witches. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more smoothing and then show you from there. All right, so this is about the stage I get to before I start doing the detailing with it. And again, we wanna kind of compare it to our other hand. See where we're at, looks pretty good. Those fingers will look a lot skinnier once we get them more detailed. And so now, um, one of the best tools to use for this is the Johnston 3-in-1 tool. You can go through and do all the little hand folds and up through the, the knuckles on each one here. Kind of nice to kind of fold in on the pads a little bit so they're a bit rounded. So go through and do that for each of the fingers. Um, your thumb will have some too. More about right here. About like that. I like to give it a squeeze so it kind of bows out a little bit right there. And then on your hand, it's nice to look at your own. You've got a line here and a line here. So you can just draw those in. And just kind of let them like just kind of push into. And then usually down, down here as well. Then I like to use a brush and go over those little lines and lighten them up a bit. So that's how you do the inner side. And then on the outside here, what you can do is if you want to use your uh, wood tool or your 3-in-1 tool here, probably I'm going to go to my wood tool. By the way, we just got restocked with both our wood tools and the 3-in-1 tools. So if you need some, come and grab them now because they go fast, but we've got a whole bunch of them again because they're so popular. All right, now you can kind of just start building the clay up here and kind of just pushing it over into knuckles. You don't even really have to add clay on, they just kind of start showing. You want to just kind of imagine like a skeletal hand underneath there 
with just the bulgy arthritic knuckles going on. And down here, you want to draw in the bones and I don't know if it's tendons or ligaments, which it is, but it leaves these lines. They just all meet right here at the center of the wrist, so you want to bring them in towards the center. And especially the older the witch is, you know, something like this versus a pretty lady doll, this one you can get to be very gnarly. Uh, your ball stylus is also a good tool just to draw here. Get some really good looking bones showing through there. Okay, so I'm going to keep repeating that for each one. Alright, just starting to shape these more. And if your fingers are tiny enough, you can kind of get in there and give a little squeeze on the top of each of these and it will make it look like a little bone. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Then I wanted to show you how we use this 3-in-1 uh, tool to make a fingernail. So I usually just kind of press in on one side and then kind of curve it over and then bring it up the other side. Just like that. And then you can kind of shape it a little bit like this if you need. And if you want, you know, shorter nails, you could put a line behind them right here as well. All right, so here's how they're coming along. I think I'll probably end up giving her another vein and some warts on this hand as well. But pretty quick, I need to do some smoothing with a brush and make it look all nice again. And down here, what I'm going to do is take a hemostat, which is this locking metal tweezery type tool, and you put it up inside, and then you can put fill this out with clay, so it's going to be looking like this instead. So brushwork next, and then I, oh, I also wanted to show you this. Just to hollow this out just a little bit. Just kind of like make the bones show a little bit more. Right through there. And I like to make the, the knuckle kind of bulgy and then skinny little sinewy type stuff on the fingers like that. And that's how you do a hand. Alright, the hand's almost done here now. We've got the the wrist and arm on, put a little wrist bone right there. And then something I like to do also is to use a little wrinkle detailer tool and you can put in a few little wrinkles here along the knuckles too. And then I also like to do it here where the hand bends and you always want to have at least three And then just kind of tap them in a little bit. And then next what I want to do is use some smoothing gel and go through the whole hand with a brush. So you just go through every part of this hand and just kind of smooth out the, the toll marks and just kind of make it look a little bit more natural. Especially to go in through the different hand creases and such. You don't want any of the creases to be like cuts in the clay. You want them just to be more creases, just little lines that you've then smoothed out pretty well with your brush. So I go through and do that for the whole hand and then I'm going to show you how to add veins and warts. One thing you can do as well is make some of these uh, kind of tendon marks here. Oh, so you kind of get these marks that are in your wrist right there. You can go over that with a brush. And then now to do little veins, it's really not too hard. You just want to make some little worms. 
Anyway, you can then put it on. And then just kind of use your, your tool. So you can just use your tool or your brush and just kind of spread them in how you want them in there. And then later go over them with a brush, definitely like this. And later when you're painting your doll, you can actually paint these a little bit of a greenish color or a purplish. Have it look more real. And then for the little warts, you just want to do the same thing except with little tiny balls. There, I'm just going to put two together just like that. And then the same kind of idea. You just want to make sure they're adhered well and then go over them with a brush because that can kind of push down the edges of them too. Shape them a little bit better if you want. And there you go. And that's how you create a witch's hand. Hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be many more yet to come. When you're done sculpting your hands, you can bake them in the oven at around 285 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 or 20 minutes. I usually like to do about 20.